Good morning, good morning. Today I'm going to try and make an attempt to change my serpentine belt on my 2008 BMW X3. So I was driving to the store the other day and unfortunately my steering wheel started to tighten up and I said, uh-oh, something is wrong. And lo and behold, this is what happened to my serpentine belt, which was worn out, ripped, and somehow tangled in the pulleys. And I was able to grab it and make it to the house. So I ordered a serpentine belt, hoping that it will be in sometime today. So what I'm going to do in the meantime, or make an attempt to do, is to remove the parts that I need to have access to the serpentine belt and pulley connections. And I'm going to try and show you how that happens as we go along. Of course, I'm not an auto mechanic, auto mechanic and I don't make any claims to be. So, viewer, at your own discretion. This is a novice making an attempt at trying to replace a serpentine belt on a 2008 BMW X3. So, take a look and see how I make out. Okay, so I'm going to remove the cables. I do have a pair of gloves on. I uh, do have some rubber gloves as well. Uh, so. I'm going to make an attempt to just remove the uh, negative cable wire first and then the positive wire. Uh, and so I'm that's what I'm going to do uh, right now is replace the, not replace, but remove the negative cable. Okay, I got my ratchet set and I have a 10 millimeter socket to remove the uh, <coughs> negative cable and of course the positive cable and they say that it's important that you remove the negative cable first because you can really mess up the electronics uh, in this car if you don't remove the correct cable uh, first so I'm going to remove my negative cable first uh, which is distinguished between the red uh, and the brown here And just remove it or untighten it just enough where you can shake it off and put that to the side somewhere where it's not touching anything. Now I'm going to move, disconnect the positive red as well. Okay, so I brought my magnetic pan so that I can put my screws in and make sure that I don't lose any of them. Okay, so I got my ratchet with the 10 millimeter just in case I, I'll need it again. I'm not sure, but I'll pop that there and everything is unplugged. Uh, so I'm going to pop this glove back on. And uh, I'm going to remove this housing here. Looks like there should be two screws. There were one down here somewhere, but there's one missing here, but there's one here and one here. So I'm missing one here. So I'm going to remove this here. Uh, and I'm just going to unscrew that. And just remember where you remove the screw. So that's why it's probably important the video what you're doing. Now you can use an electric and make this job go a little bit faster. But I'm in no rush. I'm going to take my time and make sure I do this right the first time.
vacuum. And now to remove this part, which I probably didn't need to remove because now looking at it, uh, this is attached to this here. So, I don't think I really need this removed. Because, yeah, yeah that is attached to a much larger. Okay, trial and error. Let's put them back on because I don't really need that to be removed. <clears throat> okay, so it looks like I'm going to make an attempt to move these four screws here. Two and two. And see if that removes that. They look like they are the torque 10s. Uh, so I'm going to go grab that right quick and put you on pause for a second. Okay, so what I did is I got myself a T30 torque bit and I'm going to remove these four screws here to remove this housing here. And I've already loosened the screws so that we could do that. <clears throat> now I'm just going to remove them and remove this housing and go to the next step. <clears throat> so again, you just want to make sure you keep your screws uh, <clears throat> intact. Don't lose them. <laughs> if you're anything like me, you don't have another set. So there goes the four screws that I loosened that I loosened from the housing. One, two, three, four. And let's see. So that does remove this guy here, which to me that these two screws here. And maybe these two are holding this together. Yeah, I think that's exactly what's holding that together. So I had to remove that in order to get to these screws here. So now I'm going to make an attempt to remove these two. Same thing, look like a 10, uh, I'd rather a T30 a torque bit and probably here. Let's remove these two first and then we'll go with that. Okay, so I removed the two T30 torque bit screws and nothing happens. I can see it moving, so I'm assuming that these two torque uh, T30 screws need to be removed as well. So I'm going to make an attempt to do that. And the other thing I'm going to make sure to do is to make sure I put the screws uh, back into the holes uh, that I removed them from so I don't lose them. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and try and move that. Here's what, I, here's what happened. As I was removing these two screws, uh, this isn't in here tight. It's not snug. It doesn't really fit. Uh, maybe if I had my drill and I had put it in that, it probably would have stayed connected because I could have just uh, uh, the tightness of it but it fell right down here so what I had to do was use my magnetic extension go down here and that's how I retrieved it but if I didn't have one of these I think I would be pretty messed up so it's a good thing I hadn't had this guy right here Just want to loose it to the point where you can just remove it with your hand. And again, I'm going to hope that uh, this will do the trick. Screw that with my hand. That back there. This back. Let's see if that moves this guy. I can move this, attach this guy so I can make it look easier. To remove it. Okay, so that removes that. Take this guy out. There we go. And 
that gets that out the way. I'm going to put this to the side and uh, I have the four screws, the four screws, the, the uh, T30s screws that I removed. So again, just make sure you have this recorded so you know where the, they go. So I'm going to put this to the side and I'm going to put the screws with it. And I also have the other four screws that go with the first apparatus that I removed and there and there. So I'm going to keep them there. I'll, I'll pretty much know that. Now the next thing that I have to do here is I'm going to have to, wow, you can see all of the actual belt residue. Uh, that looks like it was really tearing itself up. But there are the pulleys there, as you can see. And if once I remove this fan, uh, I think it's going to be easier for me to get that serpentine belt on when it does come. Alrighty, so let's see what we can do. I'll try and look for screws to untighten to remove that. I think there's only two. I think there's one here and I think one over here. But I'll disconnect the cables <clears throat> here and here uh, before I attempt to do that. And if you want, you could put something here to cover. This is where you filters so you may want to cover that hose area okay so again I'm going to remove these attachments here from the electrical and let's see if I can oh my that was just sitting there right out okay uh, we can definitely put that to the side that was not expected <laughs> I thought I would just probably disconnect this area here it looks like there's a little clip there and this part uh, uh, looks like it gets clamped there so yeah that's that's interesting as to why that happened that way. So this is what I was hoping to do. This part, oh, oh you there. <laughs> this is what I was hoping to remove here. Uh, just this part here, the, the connector, and the housing would stay connected to uh, the fan, uh, this part here. So it looks like it, it's come loose uh, from this area here. I'm not sure if my head is in the way, but it's just, kind of goes in like like such if I can get it back in there okay and that's it it just just sits on that like that so the other connector is over here and uh, I think I might have to get this to pull the sides these clamps push them in and just pull them up on that and that uh, is now disconnected from the fan as well. I don't see any other connections to the fan. So I got these two T30s, one on either side here, uh, that will hopefully, that will allow me to remove the fan itself. So let's see if we can do that, hopefully again. This is not a perfect connector for this here. Uh, this here is not perfect. <laughs> so I'm going to have to try and hold it as I loosen it. Okay, I tried the <coughs> T30 and that was a little too large. So I'm now <coughs> going to try a T25 over here to remove this screw. <coughs> On the <coughs> left side. <clears throat> Unfortunately, I don't see a screw uh, on the opposite side. So let's see. I'm going to have to go get a flashlight. Okay, I think I can screw the rest out by hand.
Man, that would be crazy if uh, that's a pretty long screw. And to not have one here, that's probably not nice. See if there's any clips holding this in place. This side moves pretty easy. There we go. Okay. Turn that back. And that just more jiggle. That just comes right up. There we go. And now we have access to the ser uh, serpentine pulleys. Okay, I'm just going to see if they spin. I could see where the torque T60 torque tensioner is there, uh, where we can go clockwise with that, causing that tension to relax somewhat so that we can put that serpentine belt around those uh, pulleys. I'm just going to spin the pulleys and just see if they spin all right. They have some give. But um, yeah, so that's going to definitely make it easier to put the belt on. All right, so we got the fan off. So <laughs> as I was removing the fan from its uh, housing, I noticed in front where the vents are, you'd be surprised what some mechanics will leave in the belly of your car. Sometimes they talk about physicians and surgeons sometimes leaving <laughs> some of the <laughs> apparatuses they use during surgery inside your body. Well, this is what was left in the body of my car from one of my mechanics. And there you have it. <laughs> Is that crazy? There you go. So that was left inside my car, right where the grill is. And of course, I'm sure that might have affected uh, the air intake or something to that effect. But we're going to remove that. I don't think that belongs there. Okay. So one other thing I wanted to show you is here is where our ratchet T60 uh, torque bit is going to connect right in here, uh, just beneath uh, this uh, uh, housing filter here, just right below it. And there is a uh, area uh, right above one of the pulleys. I'm not sure what it's called, but uh, this guy will allow some of that tension uh, to be relaxed so that we could put our serpentine belt. So it's just right here. I don't know if you can see me if I'm in the way. And you would go clockwise with that. It fits right in. And then I just lift that up like so. And that gives me there we go. And that moves the pulley down so that I can put the serpentine belt around that pulley and then release and let that go back into place. Hopefully Amazon will have that here shortly so we can be done this. Because from what I'm told, it's going to rain all week. This is the only day I have to do this and to do it right once. <laughs> okay, so... Let's hope that belt gets here today. If not, I'm going to have to get on my bicycle and go to the nearest store and get one there. All right. Part three coming up soon. Thanks for watching. Okay. Five hours later, our serpentine belt 
finally gets here from Amazon. Of course, I started this project maybe five to six hours ago and had hoped that I would be done uh, in, you know, ample time, maybe a couple hours at the most. But here we are. And uh, so that's the serpentine belt, uh, and that's the manufacturer, Continental. So we're going to try and put this on uh, as soon as possible, since we still have some daylight remaining. And we're going to stretch this out. Okay, so there's my diagram. I don't know if you can see that, but that's the diagram. That's what I had to do, and uh, hopefully I can put that in the way that says. Let's take a gander. See if we can get him down here. I don't know if you can see what I'm doing. Install the serpentine belt from the AC compressor over the alternator below the idler pulley and around the outside of the power steering pump. Continue around the crankshaft under the tensioner pulley back to the AC compressor. Okay, at this point you will need to attach the 60 torque bit to the ratchet and then in the tensioner just above the tension pulley Insert your ratchet, pulling and turning clockwise. This, of course, will relax the pulley so that you can put the serpentine belt around the tension pulley. I need to take something else off. All right, so it looks like this area here. I don't know if you can see that, but right here is in the way of my torque uh, tension. So I may have to move this just to get to it. So I think that's what I'm going to have to do. I have to move that to get to it. Okay, I think I finally got this thing on here. I think everything looks okay. I have to go get my flashlight to take a look and see, but I think it might be okay. I think we might be okay. All righty. Let me just get my flashlight right quick and we'll take a look and see what we got there. Okay, so now I'm just going to check the flashlight and make sure that um, the serpentine belt is actually in those grooves. Make sure that. Got it 
that's not there, then I'm in trouble. okay I think we might be okay with that so that's what I had to do I had to follow my Lord diagram to make sure that the serpentine belt went in the correct way that the smooth side is obviously on the outside and that the uh, the rigid side is on the inside okay so now we're gonna put this hose back that I had to take out looks like it's the transmission fluid hose I'm going to put that back here, tighten that back up, but I'm not going to put the fan back in just yet and all the other things until I go and get these um, high beam bubs to put in. So once I get the high beam bubs, it'll be all right. I did leak some of that transmission fluid from this line here, but I have to <clears throat> may have to refill that up. Okay, so that's it. Thanks for watching. Hopefully it was helpful six hours later. <laughs> okay, take care. Again, this is another CDQ, Drop a Dime Production, and that's the channel. CDQ, Drop a Dime Production. Pretty much just drop a dime, and you'll see CDQ. Thank you for watching.